Alright guys, welcome back to another mCreator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is how to make a generator for the cable system Forge Energy. And before we get started, I want to say that I will be going into Forge Fluid. That part's pretty much already established in my example workspace that I will be publishing once we get to that point. But um, at the moment, we're just covering the generator. And then next week, what we'll cover is a battery system. And then finally, a machine. So basically, those have all different kinds of setups uh, for how you would go about doing it. Now, it will vary depending on where your connections are and everything like that. But we'll get right into importing some textures into Tail of Biomes. So what we'll do is we'll import some block ones. I already have some from the example workspace. I'll be updating these later for the mod, retexturing them and stuff like that. But we need to import these three textures. Uh, it's going to be a solar panel um, top, sides, and bottom. So we'll be able to work with those. So these are the textures right here. Uh, there's no model, so we can just use a block for that. So let's go into the blocks and then we'll go into forge and then we'll create a new folder for generators. So generators. And then what we can do is we can make our block here. So I'm going to call it uh, solar panel. Let's see if I can spell properly today. I think it's with two ends. I'm not sure. <laughs> I might have to update it later. All right, so then we're going to select the side texture, which I added a gear icon, and then we're going to select the top texture. And then for the bottom, what we're going to do is have our connection for that point right down here. So this is going to be where our connection is for that cable point. And um, depending on how you want your block to set, be set up, you might want to have it set up for rotation. If you do add rotation, you're going to have to take in consideration the sides. Now, the front side is going to be your north direction. Um, I believe the right side is east, south, and then west, I think. I'm not entirely sure what direction they are. Like I'm trying to visualize. So if I'm facing this way, then... Right might be actually west, I'm not sure. Uh, but you'll have to figure that out when you set it up. It, I know that the back is south and front is north for sure. It might take a little bit of um, time to figure out. But in our case, uh, we don't need to actually add it because our plug is at the bottom. So we can have an easier time setting it up. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to go to hitboxes, make sure everything's set up here. And then I'm going to set the block to iron just because then it gives us a little bit more flexibility over what we can use to break it. Go to require tool and we're going to set the required tool to iron, I think. So that will make it a little bit more unique to the mod. And we want it to drop itself. So basically that's all set up. And then we can set some properties here so we'll go with 2.5 and 2.5 for the hardness and resistance uh, the sound I think what we'll do is we'll probably go with copper maybe I don't know we'll see if there's where the copper is yeah we'll go with the copper one and moving on to advanced uh, we can set up the color on the map I'm just going to select iron for this one we want the tick rate to be set to one for a generator Reason being is it's going to be pumping this, the energy into the system and it's really important to have the same amount of flow for that. So um, in the last tutorial, uh, I basically explained the tick rate for the cables needing to be one. So this is exactly the same uh, thing for the generator because it's generating the energy. Now, if you want to add flammability, you can do that or any other properties. I'm going to actually set this to block for piston uh, moving and blocked for AI path finding. So entities won't use it. We're gonna to need to set the MBT for this block. And if you want to set the configuration for that, that I just did, then you can do that as well. We will need to enable the for enable store energy storage. And we're going to reset the maximum capacity to zero. And we're going to set the, uh, thing for the store or the generation 
same as our cables. So we can go into our cables, take a look at what we have for energy, and it's at 64. So we're going to use 64 for our cables for both of these. So we want receive, and actually we don't want any receive because it's not um, generating anything. Like, it, well, it will be generating things, but we don't want it to go back into the system. So we can set the, um, uh, well, best to just set it to 64. It can't really add it to the storage anyways if we have it set to zero, so it won't matter too much. And then what we want is a update tick procedure. So we're gonna create one of those. And we're just gonna save that for the time being. And that's all set up. Uh, we will need a block added procedure as well. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and just save that for now. And we'll come back to that in just a second once we get the block all generated. So at generation properties, we don't really need anything particular. And we're gonna save. And I think I just saved all that to the cables accidentally. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to move all those to our solar panel one generators there we go okay so these are the procedures that you should have you should have a update tick and a block added and then you have your solar panel block itself so in our update tick that's where our energy generation will be taken into consideration and then there is the cables connections that we'll need to set up now so what we want to do is go to block procedures block actions and then we want to go down to here and what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to our cables, uh, our cable script, and we're going to take a look at the uh, energy, and then we can open up the energy file. And these are the names that you want for your directions. In our case, we want the down direction to be true. So because it's on the it's on the bottom of the block, so we want to make sure that this is enabled. Now we need to make sure that the same name is the same as the cable or it will not connect. So if you are working with something that is just like uh, cables F down, then you need to make sure that your blocks and devices also use the same thing. In our case, we're using cables F copper down which is what we're going to be using to connect to uh, for the other sides by default they're going to be false unless you specify them to be true so we don't need to worry about anything else in this particular procedure outside of that one tag so we can save that for the block added and then we can go back to our uh, generators and then we can work on the generation script for the forge energy so let's get to that all right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate if it is day inside the world. So we're going to grab an if statement and we're going to set the time to, or not set the time, we're going to get the time of the day. So we're going to want to test if it is day in the provided world. So that will be one thing that we need. We also need an and statement. And we're going to test if the block, going back to world data, can see the sky. So we're going to actually offset this position by one above the block. So it can test if the block above is um, can see the sky directly. And that will make sure that it doesn't get um, interfered with the block that it, it is at the current position. So basically what this will do is it'll test if it's daytime in the provided world and that the sky is um, visible from where the block location is. So if that's true, then what we can do is we can run the next script. So the next script, what we're going to do is we're going to create a three thing system, um, one else statement and or two one if statement, one else if statement, and one else statement. So once we get that part done, we can add a and statement to these, like we did with the other one. And then we're going to go ahead and test if the um, blocks are located at... Actually, we need an or statement as well for this. So we're going to go with that. 
and we're going to place them like this. So like that. So basically what we need to do now is get the actual um, weather of the provided world because weather is going to affect the uh, light level of the dimension and stuff. So we want to know if it is um, raining and thundering. So if we go down to the other one, we can test these two conditions. So we want to know if it's raining and thundering, if it's not thundering but raining, and if it's thundering but not raining. And then the only other combination after that would be our, if it is not raining or thundering. So that would be an R else statement. Once we've done that, what we can do is we can go ahead and go to our blocks, energy and fluid, and then we're going to send, but we need to test for the send first, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a variable and we're going to test send down and then what we can do is we can go ahead and set that to a number and we can test if the block below um, can receive that amount of ener energy so we're going to go ahead and send and then we want to basically say okay so if it's 64 then we want to maybe drop that down to something like 16 um, that will allow less energy when it's act or less energy to generate when it is during the when it's raining and thundering and then maybe we want something like 32 to be sent out per thing per generator when it is only one thundering or uh, raining and then maybe we want uh, 64 for the other condition so we'll test those different values and then we'll replace our send block with the variable itself uh, for that one. And then we need to make sure that all the coordinates are set up for all these blocks. So we're going to get Y and then subtract by one. And we're going to test 64 and, oh, pardon me, minus one. And then we want to go ahead and remove the other ones for the other Y statements because we want to test if the block below can receive that energy. And before we do that, uh, another thing that we probably want to test uh, before any of this is even possible is if the block below has the proper cable connection for up. So what we want to do is we want to add a and statement to the top here and we're going to test that right before we test if it's day so that means that we'll run first thing and then we'll already know if it can connect to that block so we're going to go to our data under blocks scroll all the way down and we're going to grab this logic one and we should be able to just say up and then we'll set the direction to y minus one. This will test if the block below is supported for that particular cable. If the time is day and that the location can see the sky. If all those things are true, then this will run, which it will test if it's raining or thundering. If not, if it is, then it's going to test sending 16 energy. And then it will basically send what it can to that particular block. And then if that's not true, then what we're going to do is we're going to test if one of these conditions are true. So if it's either raining or thundering, and if that's true, then we'll only send 32 of the energy. Um, now remember our energy cap is at 64 for this cable, so we can only set up to 64. So if that's true, then it will do all the same thing as before. And if it's only, if it's not sunny or if it's uh, not raining or thundering, then what it's going to do is it's going to try to send the energy to the block below and make sure that it um, can actually receive the amount of energy. If it's not going to be 64 exactly, then it's going to calculate that in the variable and only send what it can through the variable itself. So that's basically how you make a quick and easy solar panel script. Uh, we can actually save this 
and go in game now and give it a test through the data command. We won't be able to see exactly what's going on with it per se, but we can actually use the data command to see what energy is going through. So let me go into game and we'll test that out right now. All right, so we're in game and we're going to go ahead to our energy tab and we should see our low capacity cable and our solar panel. So once we've done that, we can basically place down the cable like this and we can test to see if it actually connects. And you can see that it does connect to the actual solar panel and there should be already energy in here. So we can test by going slash data by looking at the block, make sure the hit box is actually set up for this and it should outline. It's a little hard to see on the gray, but there is an outline around the, the block that we're looking at. And we're going to go with get and then block and then we're going to automatically select the location by hitting tab and then we can just basically take a look at what the block has set up so in our case we have forged data so the forged data is basically saying that the block is uh, facing west uh, or facing south and that the cable direction energy is zero so might be something going on with the cables. Let's go ahead and test this block right here. So this one has 64, but it's not getting to this other block right here. Let's try replacing it and doing a line like that. So it might take a little bit of time to actually fill up the cables as well. So I'll try that block again. And it already has 64. So as you can see, this block right here has 64. We can try this cable right here. might have just needed to be replaced. So this one has 32 at the moment. And this one has zero. So it's basically sending it um, as much as it can to all the different blocks. Now, one of the things that might be happening is it could be sending it back into this particular block, which uh, could be causing it to not generate more energy. Might have to take a look at that later on. But if if it if that's the case, and I'll patch up the code to try to uh, fix that issue. But as you can see, it does generate energy, and we can try sending it another direction, and it should give us. some energy. So we have 32 in that one. And 64. So it is generating a little bit of energy. 32. So this one's at 32 now. And that one's at zero. So yeah, I'll have to take a look at the code for the cables. Um, most likely it won't change on how you need to set it up. I just need to take a look at the energy script and make sure that everything is working uh, correctly. But um, outside of that, that's how you make a generator. Um, as you can see, it does generate into it. It's just the cables being a little bit finicky. So I'll make sure to try to troubleshoot what's going on there and see if I can't uh, randomize the location for the sending just so it um, gets it a little bit further um, from the block itself. So hopefully that will help. But if you're new to my channel, don't forget to be subscribed to the channel, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.